Hi, my name is Ranger Kurt, and I am the Education Specialist for the Southern Idaho Parks of the National Park Service. Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about animals and their adaptations here at Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve. How many of you have been to national park sites here in Southern Idaho? We have three of them. Raise your hand if you've gone to any of them. I see someone over there has gone to Minidoka National Historic Site. Ooh, and someone over there has gone to Hagerman Fossil Beds National Monument. Maybe you have already come to Craters of the Moon before. Well, I sure hope that all of you come on by one day. And why should you come? Well, it's because Craters of the Moon has some awesome wildlife. And the landscape looks weird. Yeah, you heard me, weird. As in, in 1924, President Calvin Coolidge established our site and called it a weird and scenic landscape peculiar to itself. I mean, look at all those lava rocks. Craters is covered with them. But many plants and animals have also found a way of living here as well. Today, we're going to learn about one species of animal here at Craters and how it is adapted to the environment. This is going to be our mystery critter. I want you to see if you can guess it. Here's your first hint. I like to live in places with a lot of mountains and rocks. Well, I bet you and I could think of one place that has a lot of mountains and a lot of rocks. Check out this video to learn more. Bizarre monoliths frozen in time. Harsh, unexpected landscapes of vast lava flows. Volcanic craters and massive cinder cones that seem unearthly in their stark form. Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve captures the awesome geologic forces that were active here only 2,000 years ago. When violent volcanic activity ripped open the Earth. Wow, right? 15,000 years ago to even 2,000 years ago, volcanoes were erupting here in southern Idaho, all along this place that we call the Great Rift. It was this huge rip in the earth, you can see it right over there on your screen, and hot magma shot out of the earth's crust. This Great Rift is over 50 miles long, and it's helped to form the lava fields of Craters of the Moon. So, what happened to all of that super hot lava? Some of the lava sprayed high into the air and rained down as cinders. It created all of these volcanic features. Lava flows, spatter cones, cinder cones. There are very few places on our continent like it. Places where our world has been so recently formed. Craters of the Moon is a massive park. Located in southern Idaho, on the Snake River Plain. 752,000 acres of jagged rocks and sagebrush. From North Crater to Big Cinder Butte. From Spatter Cones to the caves area. Really cool, right? Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve is one hour away from Haley, 170 miles away from Boise, and an hour and a half away from Idaho Falls. I really hope you come on by and visit one day. Back to our mystery animal. Here's your second hint. My cousin has a holiday named after them. You know what animal might have a holiday named after them? Chew on that one for a little bit. We'll come back. So, what's it like living on lava rocks? Let me tell you, it's pretty extreme. The temperatures, negative 37 degrees was the lowest temperature ever measured in the wintertime at Craters of the Moon. The summertime, 150 degrees on the surface of that black basalt rock. The air temperature is like 80 to 90 degrees, even 100 sometimes. It's very, very hot. We call this environment the high desert. It makes it very, very hard for animals to be able to survive here. But 
How do they survive? That's the main question of our presentation today. They adapt. Adaptations are changes that help animals live in an environment. For example, when the seasons change, animals might change their behavior or how they act or how they look. Like in the wintertime, animals act a little differently when that earth is tilted toward the sun. Here's an example for you. The long-tailed weasel, I know, it's really cute, at Craters of the Moon has a really cool adaptation. They change their fur from brown to tan into white depending on the season. When does the long-tailed weasel have white fur? The winter time, that's right! The winter fur, which is white, helps them blend into that snow as camouflage and helps them escape predators who might want to eat them. Pretty useful. Another adaptation is called migration. You may have heard of this one before. Migration is when an animal moves from one place to another depending upon the season. An animal that does that around craters is the pronghorn. Here's an example of them migrating. Now, the scientists here at Craters of the Moon put GPS trackers on the pronghorn and went to study them to see what their route looks like as they migrate across craters of the moon. Check it out with me. Now, if you're watching your screen, you're gonna see the calendar changing into the fall to the winter time and watch those markers as they move across craters and the pronghorn move from their summer to winter habitat. Animals like deer and elk and moose and pronghorn migrate to winter climate during winter during, whoops, I'm sorry, migrate to warmer climates as temperatures drop to where there might be more food or to where it's safer or where their breeding grounds might be. There's a lot of reasons for migration, but it's definitely a really cool adaptation. So let's do a little review. Adaptations are changes that help animals live in an environment. There are two different kinds. One is structural, changes to how an animal looks, that long tail weasel on its fur. And another one is behavioral, changes to how an animal acts, like that migration pattern for pronghorn. Humans, yep, we also adapt to human adaptations to different types of seasons. Here are four pretty funny examples. We might bundle up, we might stay indoors, we might invent things to help us depending upon what that climate looks like outside, how that weather feels during the day. Now, one of these adaptations looks a little funky to me. I don't think it fits. Which one is not for the wintertime? Think about that. That's right. It's that fan. The fan doesn't use and use in the wintertime. No, it's for the summer. Well, you've done a pretty great job understanding adaptations. I think you're ready to find out what our mystery animal is. Your third and final hint. I'm scared of foxes and dogs. And when I see one, I whistle to warn my friends. Lives in the rocks, has a holiday named after them, and whistles. What do you think this animal is? Final guess. It's a marmot. Marmots, they live under the rocks of craters of the moon. Their cousin, the groundhog, has a whole day named after him, and sometimes folks call them whistle pigs. Well, here are some of the neighbors of the marmot at craters of the moon. Check out this video. Even in this stark setting, there is a remarkable diversity of life. Almost 300 species of animals make a home here. Over 750 different types of plants have been found here as well. So, all of those animals and plants in that video have adapted to life at Craters of the Moon in our very extreme environment that came from hot lava. Now, our mystery critter, the marmot, has also adapted to living here. The yellow belly marmot has a few features. Brown fur, a yellow belly, obviously, and a white patch between its eyes, so you can tell us the difference between them and the other ones. Now, what's most important is that marmots have a special adaptation to help them survive the cold winters and the hot summers at Craters of the Moon. Thinking about that winter time, do you think you know what marmots might do, what their adaptation might be? They go to sleep. That's right, hibernation. Marmots hibernate, as in when animals have a long period of deep sleep during the winter. Marmots dig burrows under the rocks of craters 
and they have a safe place to sleep. Now, do you know any other animals that might sleep through the winter time? That's right, bears. Now, the question is, how does sleeping help marmots get through the winter? It has to do a little bit with science, actually. You see, a marmot's heart beats about 80 heartbeats per minute. The humans is between 70 to 100 heartbeats per minute. What does that look like? Well, it looks almost like this NASA astronaut clapping. If each clap is a heartbeat, you could imagine that happening 80 times in 60 seconds. Now, how does this change when someone hibernates? In hibernation, the heart slows down. In hibernation, a marmot's heart slows down to four beats per minute. What does that look like? It looks like 60 seconds divided by four heartbeats equals about 15 seconds in between each heartbeat. To show you that example, I'm actually going to have you try it. So when this counter starts at 15 again, I'm going to put my hands out, just like I want you to put your hands out, okay? So, hands out. I want to count 15 seconds until our hands come together. And clap. That's one heartbeat and 15 seconds in between. So how does sleeping once again help the marmot? Well, it helps them because it slows down their heart rate. It's about heart and energy conservation. If we try it this way, here's an example for you. I want you to actually jog in place. That's right. So when I say go, I want you to get out of your seat and jog in place as fast as you can. I'm going to do it too. Ready? Go. 14, 13, 12, 11. Are you still jogging? Are you still running? All right, here we go. Almost there, getting all that energy going. And in five, four, three, two, one, sit down. Whew, just like that marmot in that photo for 15 seconds. Now we're gonna sit in our seats and rest. You can feel your heart if you would like to. Now, which activity was easier for your heart? Hmm? Sitting, like the marmot in the photo. Which activity made your heart rate higher? Running or jogging in place. What does that mean? It means that a faster heart rate means you're using more energy. Like when we play sports or when we run in place, while a slower heart rate, like when a marmot is hibernating, they're using less energy. They're having the ability to save that energy to survive longer without having to go out to get more food or to be able to make any way of surviving in that winter time. So you might be asking Ranger Kurt, what happens in the summertime though? They also sleep. We call that estivation. Marmots estivate or sleep through the very hot days in the summer. I mean, can't you imagine what it's like for them to have all this fur and to go out on that really, really hot lava rock? I wouldn't do it myself. So remember, a slower heart rate means you're using less energy. Hibernation helps the marmot slow down their heartbeat to save that energy. Now, a marmot actually spends about 80% of their time in their dens. They sleep a lot, which is why this marmot is cleaning out its den and putting in fresh straw to keep out the bed bugs. The actual environment of Craters of the Moon provides a safe place for them to be able to rest, save their energy, and to continue on being the really, really cute animals that we all love to see. So what's our takeaway? Our takeaway is in, in times like these, it's good to be like a marmot. What do I mean by that? Like this marmot, waiting patiently for the seasons to change. The marmots at Craters of the Moon survive the hot and cold seasons by staying home and staying safe from their predators. You know, we can adapt to what's going on in the world today, just like the marmots at Craters. So let's learn from their animal adaptations and adapt to what's happening. And one day, one day hopefully when this is all over, come on by to Craters of the Moon come learn a little bit about that natural world that we have out here in Southern Idaho. If you're interested, go to www.nps.gov crmo and follow us on Facebook for more updates at Craters of the Moon NPS. Thanks a lot.